Dynatac is a series of cellular telephones manufactured by Motorola Incorporated from 1983 to 1994. The Motorola Dynatac 8000X commercial portable cellular phone received approval from the US FCC on September 21, 1983. One of full charge took roughly 10 hours, and it offered 30 minutes of talk time. Two, it also offered an LED display for dialing or recall of one of 30 phone numbers. It was priced at $3,995 in 1984, its commercial release year, equivalent to $9,952 in 2023. Dynatac was an abbreviation of Dynamic Adaptive Total Area Coverage. Several models followed, starting in 1985 with the 8000s, and continuing with periodic updates of increasing frequency, until 1993's Classic 2. The Dynatac was replaced in most roles by the much smaller Motorola Microtac when it was first introduced in 1989, and by the time of the Motorola StarTac's release in 1996, it was obsolete. The Microtac, released by Motorola on April 25, 1989, was the smallest and lightest phone available at the time. Upon its release, it made headlines across the world. One, the phone was released as the Microtac Pocket Cellular Telephone. The first Microtacs were known as the Motorola 9800X, a continuation of the numerical name Motorola gave their phones in the 1980s. The Microtac was designed to fit into a shirt pocket. These very rare phones featured a black plastic housing and a red 8 character dot matrix LED display, which was able to show more information than the display of its predecessor, the Motorola Dynatac 8000X however, dot matrix displays of the time were still quite limited by today's standards. The inside of the flip piece had the Motorola logo on a diagonal, above thin blue diagonal lines. The badge on the front flip had a raised metallic Motorola logo, and micro TAC in small blue letters above the display. The micro-sized phone measured as long as over 9 inches, 23 centimeters, long when open and weighed in 12.3 ounces, 350 grams, with the slim battery dot to the phone, incorporated a built-in alphanumeric phone book, as one of the many standard features. A numerically organized menu allowed the user to select options for phone operations. Some of the many options included security codes, two phone number operations, a charge rate and currency calculator, secretarial memory scratch bits, hands-free operation, keypad tones, memory protection, phone number and name storage, as well as cellular system operation options. The Motorola StarTac, first released on 3 January 1996, is often assumed to be the first ever clamshell flip mobile phone. Two technically, however, NEC had been releasing flip phones on NTT Decomo's PDC Mova network long before 1996, namely the TZ804 and TZ1501, both respectively launched in 1991 and late 1994. 3 4 The StarTac is the successor of the MicroTac, a semi clamshell design first launched in 1989.5, whereas the MicroTac's flip folded down from below the keypad, the StarTac folded up from above the display. In 2005, PC World named the StarTac as the sixth greatest gadget of the past 50 years. Out of a list of 50, two, the StarTac was among the first mobile phones to gain widespread consumer adoption. Approximately 60 million StarTacs were sold. The StarTac brand was revived in 2004 and 2007 for a series of flip phones exclusive to some Asian markets, and again for a cordless phone model. The Motorola D160 was a digital version of Motorola's entry-level analog phone, the A160. It had one unique feature, if you needed to use the phone in an emergency and the battery was flat, it would take AA batteries instead. I am not sure how long they lasted, however, the D160 had a rounded look, which some commentators found difficult to use. However, it was a reasonably well-made phone, if lacking in features. It had no memory for numbers, you had to rely on the SIM card, and the menus were a bit fiddly. However, it did support text messaging, if your network did. Forone21, Motorola rebranded the D160 as the Memphis. It was a deep blue color, and had a different keypad layout. The Memphis was ONE21's entry level phone. THED160 also had the distinction being the first orange paid phone. 
Orange launched Paid, with the Just Talk brand, towards the end of 1997, and offered only this phone. The phone cost £179.99. The Motorola i1000 Plus is a Motorola Iden series phone. The phone came out in 1999. It is a clamshell phone. The phone featured the Direct Connect feature, two-way radio. On Nextel, it offered Nextel Net and other Nextel features. The i1000 Plus is a digital phone. The phone, on the battery pack section and with the flip closed, measures about 1 inch in thickness. Dot. Motorola Timeport, 1999 The Motorola Timeport is one of several Canterbury phones manufactured by Motorola. ITS design included an organic electroluminescent display, which was in fully color, but included classic greens, blues, and reds of the time. The Timeport made its name by working on GSM 900 MHz, 1800 MHz, and 1900 MHz networks, meaning it could work in the UK, most of Europe, and the United States too. This phone was the executive's phone of choice at the time. Motorola V100, 1999 described as a personal communicator as well as a phone, the V100 propelled the two-way messaging craze. Vibration alerts, mono ringtones and a funky design made this one pretty popular. Motorola Timeport P7389i, 2000 Motorola and Cisco Systems supplied the world's first commercial GPRS cellular network to BT Cellnet in the UK. The Timeport P7389i then became the first GPRS cellular phone. Motorola V70, 2002 The V70 certainly sported a pretty cool look. This instantly recognizable design was considered a fashion phone back in its day. A swiveling circular monochrome panel with a neon backlight keypad and interchangeable frames made this a pretty snazzy device for Motorola. The Motorola V70 had a WAP browser, GPRS capabilities, a vibrating mode and voice dialing. Motorola T720, 2002 often described as a cross between the StarTac and V60 series, the T720 notably included customization features. Owners were able to change the phone's front and black plates to customize and personalize the look of their device. Motorola C200, 2003 This phone was pretty boring for its time, but its simple design and cheap price tag made it the company's third highest selling cell phone of all time. The Motorola C200 was so well built that some users were claiming to still be using this phone, with its original battery, as late as 2011. Motorola A760, 2003 The A760 was world's first handset to combine a Linux operating system and Java technology with full PDA functionality. Highlights of this device included a digital camera, video player, MP3 player, speakerphone, multimedia messaging and even Bluetooth technology. Motorola i730, 2003 This phone spearheaded the PTT, push to talk, craze. It was a Nextel operated device, and became synonymous with the carrier. It also boasted a fancy display capable of supporting up to 65,000 colors. A classic flip phone loved by many. Motorola RAZR, 2004 Back in 2004, we had plenty of good things to say about the Motorola RAZR. Its extremely thin design made it stand out from the competition, and this particular model is now often associated with the entire Razr series. A slim and metallic body spoke of the future of minimalistic smartphone design, and saw this device being marketed as an exclusive fashion phone. The RAZR proved wildly successful, and Motorola sold over 50 million units by 2006. Motorola PEBL, 2005 The Motorola PEBL was a classic clamshell mobile phone that could be snapped open with one hand, and featured a highly polished metal finish and a cold, for the time, appearance. 
it supported the tri-band network, had a whopping 5 megabytes of memory, and even sported a GA camera. Motorola ROKRE1 2005 The Motorola ROKRE1 saw Motorola pairing up with Apple to create a brand new device that would be the first phone to support iTunes in sync, the second one being the Apple iPhone in 2007. The Motorola ROKRE1 allowed users to take 100 tracks from their iTunes collection out and about with them. This paled in insignificance when compared with the Apple iPod, and a slow transfer rate resulted in a lack of appeal and lackluster sales. Motorola KRZR K1 2006 is a clamshell flip phone. The KRZR was longer but narrower than the Motorola Razr. The KRZR series kicked off with the K1. Motorola was trying to rejuvenate the success of the original RAZR with this new device that included a 2 megapixel camera, an MP3 player, and a snazzy design. We thought it was certainly a safe upgrade from the RAZR, but hardly a radical and exciting departure. Motorola Q 2006 The Motorola Q was a non-touchscreen phone that ran Windows Mobile 5.0 Smartphone Edition OS. With the Motorola Q, the company was attempting to offer an alternative to BlackBerry that was incredibly popular with business folk of the time. The best mobile phone deals for the Samsung S21, iPhone 12, Google Pixel 4 or 5, OnePlus 8T and more the Rob Kerr.9 July 2021 The Moto Q featured a QWERTY keyboard, integrated Bluetooth technology, Edu access, wireless ink for any time connectivity with email, calendar and contact synchronization as well as support for Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Adobe Acrobat. But none of these features was enough to dethrone BlackBerry. Motorola SLVR 6 Lira, 2006 known for its thin design, the 6 Lira held the title of the thinnest mobile phone in the UK before the Samsung P300 came along. The Motorola SLVR 6 Lira was ideal for the fashionista on a budget, as we put it in 2006. It had a few things going for it, but wasn't without its flaws. Motorola Riz Z8 2007 The Motorola Riz Z8 featured an incredibly funky design for the time. We enjoy the tactile feel and the classic Motorola materials combined with the kick slider design. While other phones of the time were focused on music, the Motorola Riz Z8 was pitched as a video device. A screen that supported 16 million colors and 30 FPS were the other highlights, as were the HSDPA connectivity, stereo Bluetooth, 2 megapixel camera and an expandable micro slot. Motorola ROKRE8 2008 The Motorola ROKRE8 wanted to be everyone's music player, and that much was clear from the four-way music controls featured prominently on the design. At the time, we thought the music sounded great, but it wasn't the most advanced phone on the market, and other features had suffered in favor of music capabilities. Still, at least it had a 3.5mm headphone jack. Motorola Aura 2008 The Motorola Aura bore a striking similarity to the V70 from a few years previous, but this outlandish mobile represented an entry into the elite world of high-end mobile phones with a £1,400 price tag that puts even today's flagships to shame. Made from stainless steel, the Motorola Aura also boasted moving cogs and a circular screen protected by a Swiss-made lens. This phone was well and truly about looks over functionality. No Wi-Fi, 3G or Micros card slot and certainly no apps to speak of, but it did look pretty special. Motorola ZN5 2008 The Motorola ZN5 saw Motorola pushing hard to regain the glory days of the RAZR. This time Motorola collaborated with Kodak to release a device with a focus on photography. This Canterbury style phone included a 5 megapixel camera as well as optimization for multimedia applications. We found the ZN5 to be a bit underwhelming at the time, but it's certainly another of Motorola's more interesting devices. 
Motorola Droid 2009 The Motorola Droid was a multimedia-enabled smartphone that ran Google's Android operating system. The Droid launched with Android Eclair, Android 2.0, and helped kick off one of the most successful mobile franchises in the world. At the time, we thought the Motorola Droid was a fantastic device offering a state-of-the-art experience with flawless telephone reception to boot. It was launched as the Motorola Milestone in other regions. Motorola Droid X 2010 This device revamped the Droid series by ditching the huge heavy design often associated with droids in favor of a, at that time, anyway, slim design. Despite this, it was still large and hardly the prettiest device around, but it did include an 8 megapixel camera and excellent video capture too. The Droid X certainly had a lot going for it and ran on Android 2.2 with swipe pre installed, which made it interesting after the ditching of the slide out keyboard. Motorola Fire XT311 Android smartphone was launched in July 2011. It is running on the Qualcomm MSM7227-1 processor with Adreno 200 GPU. The phone has 256 MB RAM, and internal storage is expandable using Microsoft up to 32 GB. The Motorola Fire XT311 has a 2.8 inches 240x320 pixels TFT LCD display with a pixel density of 143 pi. Coming to cameras, it has a 3.15 MP rear camera. It has a micro S port for data sensing and charging. There is an accelerometer sensor present on the Motorola Fire XT311. It is a single SIM smartphone with support for 3G, Wi-Fi, FM radio, Bluetooth and GPS. 2.The Motorola Fire XT311 runs on Android OS v2.3.4, Gingerbread, and all this is powered by a 1420mAh battery. It measures 116.5 x 58 x 13.5 mm, height x width x thickness, with a total weight of 110 grams, including battery. Motorola Fire XT Android smartphone was launched in August 2011. It is running on the Qualcomm MSM 7220 one processor with Adreno 200 GPU. The phone has 512 MB RAM, and internal storage is expandable using Microsoft up to 32 GB. The Motorola Fire XT has a 3.5 inches 320 x 480 pixels TFT LCD display with a pixel density of 165 pi. Coming to cameras, it has a 5 MP rear camera and a GA front camera for selfies. It has a micro S port for data sensing and charging. There is an accelerometer sensor present on the Motorola Fire XT. It is a single SIM smartphone with support for 3G, Wi-Fi, FM radio, Bluetooth and GPS. 2.The Motorola Fire XT runs on Android OS v2.3.4, Gingerbread, and all this is powered by a 1540mAh battery. It measures 114x62x12 x 12 mm, height x width x thickness, with a total weight of 114 grams, including battery. Motorola Ming A1680 2011 The Motorola Ming was a mobile phone sold in Hong Kong and China only. It was part of a series of devices with interesting specifications, this model included a transparent clamshell cover and stylus pen. Certainly quirky. Motorola the Trix 4G 2011 After a high-profile debut at CES 2011, this device is ultimately remembered for its gimmicky laptop dock. Motorola's focus was on a device that put a computer in your pocket and came with a range of accessories too. The Motorola the Trix was likely the forefather of the current Moto mods and showed that Motorola wasn't afraid to innovate. Motorola Droid Razr Max 2012 Resurrecting the Razr series, the Max had a long-lasting battery life and impressive smart action software. The Motorola Droid Razr Max once again saw Motorola trying to relive the hazy days of RAZR glory. This new device might not have had the same style as the original device, but what it did have was a smashing battery, which lasted for as much as two days. At the time, it was likely the best Android device to own, especially if you wanted it to last and last. The lack of Android 4 at launch had many upset though. Motorola Droid 4 2012A part of the Verizon Droid franchise, the Droid 4 is considered one of the last great QWERTY smartphones. It supposedly perfected the mobile keyboard with responsive, tactile, and strong keys. 
Moto X 2013 Motorola Moto X was Motorola's first flagship, after becoming a Google-owned company and as such, it was much anticipated, and much sought after. It wasn't really much of a flagship though, aimed more at the mass market, and designed to appeal to everyone it didn't have the bleeding edge specs many would hope for from a flagship device. It did, however, offer customization options and some funky aesthetics thanks to Moto Maker. Moto G, 2013 The Moto G launched in 2013 wanting to do something that other smartphones didn't do, bring all that power to emerging markets. The Moto G started a trend, wanting to wipe out feature phones, and put Android in the pockets of those who previously couldn't afford to own a smartphone. It kickstarted a great family of Moto phones that's still running today, and in many cases, still offers a great experience at the affordable end of the market. Nexus 6 2014 The Nexus 6 saw Motorola going large with a Nexus device that moved into the phablet territory. This phone had many saying it was too big, but was also rejoiced for being a fantastic all-around smartphone, running the latest version of Android, that was always sure to appeal to true Android fans. The Nexus 6 followed the design of the Moto X, and it looked really good for it too. We thought the Nexus 6 had plenty of power, good all-round performance and a solid build backed by an attractive design. Moto Z and Moto Mods 2016 The Moto Z was all about mods clip-on modules, offering a variety of different highlights including speakers, improved cameras and much more. This certainly made the phone stand out, but also assumed you'd want to spend more money in order to accessorize your smartphone. The Moto Z wasn't a flagship device, but it was certainly interesting, and Moto Mods continued well beyond the original phone. Motorola Razr, 2019 The Razr is back for 2019, and this time it's a vision of the future. The 2004 icon has been reinvented with a folding display, seeing a familiar clamshell design that effectively lets you fold your phone in half and slip it into your pocket. It's already attracting a lot of attention, as will the $1,500 price. It's going to be available in early 2020 on Verizon and E in the UK, pre-orders are open. Moto G9 Power With the Moto G9 Power, Motorola went against the norm and added a whopping battery into its phone that other flagship phones would balk at. We found this phone could easily go two days before needing a charge as a result. On its own, that's one heck of a selling point. Other highlights included a 64 megapixel camera and an affordable price tag too. It might not be as fancy as other phones, but we thought it was a great option if you wanted something capable of lasting and lasting. 